Welcome back to another episode of RNT Fitness Radio. This week, you've got uh, Akash and I talking through uh, a couple of topics as well as answering some of our listener questions. So right now we are in Crawley and the sun is shining for once. Akash has driven down from Northwest London. We've recorded some content and uh, we're map- uh, we are mapping out sort of the next uh, six weeks of uh, content for RNT. And if you can hear any disturbances because Akash is fidgeting. Um, okay, so where should we start? Uh, this, well, it's this also Sunday important to mention that uh, this is the first podcast together both in your new apartment yeah 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 we're in my new apartment uh we're both dieting so we can't crack out the champagne unfortunately <laughs> or even order a takeaway or even watch tv because i have no wi-fi <laughs> so we've had uh, chicken and rice we've had some sugar-free jelly akash has had water and i've had a uh, diet iron brew so uh you know, celebrating in style yeah it's not being quite what we expected <laughs> <laughs> no onwards and upwards though um, so just a quick overview on our diets. Uh, I'll talk about mine briefly and then Akash can just mention how his is going as well. So I'm dieting for San Diego. Akash and I head to San Diego and do like a little mini trip around uh, California in about six weeks. So I'm doing a mini diet for that, which you guys can follow on YouTube. If you type in RNT fitness, the cut, I put episode one up, uh, last week, which was, uh, how I'm setting up the diet. So I'm going to go quite aggressive for the next six weeks um, using a few fat burners like your bean and Shreddable. Um, diet is quite aggressive. Training's remaining the same. And I'm also doing abs and cardio fasted each morning. Um, Akash, on the other hand, is dieting for a different reason. So I'm dieting for two reasons. Firstly, was um, just it was actually just a mini cut from uh, my muscle building phase, which is something we're going to discuss today. And secondly, because we've got a, a video shoot planned uh, for the 15th of April so I just wanted to get my uh, face a little bit sharper <laughs> less, of a, less of a double chin <laughs> <laughs> and uh, more vascular in my arms so the plan was to drop between 10 15 pounds about 10 pounds down so far and you're probably aiming for another five or six in the next you know, two next two weeks or so t- yeah t- t- 10, days, yeah, right? 10 yeah. days or so so going pretty hard setting my diet up with about 160 grams of protein which is probably the lowest that I've gone in uh, in forever really um, about 40 grams of fat and maybe around 200 to 250 grams of carbs. And then I'm doing it in the intermittent fasting style that uh, Adam recommended. And so far it's been uh, it's been pretty good for, especially for work and productivity, which yeah. is, yeah, it's been it's been really productive actually with work. Yeah, it just saves having to know clock watch. Okay, yeah. it's 9 a.m. I need to get up, I need to cook my eggs, I need to sit and eat these, clean up the bowls, yeah. get back into the flow of work. Then it hits 12 p.m. and then it's like, right, now I need to cook chicken and rice. So again, you dirty the pans, you have to clean up. You know, it just takes so much time out of your day. Yeah, I mean, normally I used to eat at 7, 10, 1, 4, 7. But now I'm going uh, 11, 30, 3, and 7. So it's, it's so much easier. So I'm working now from 5.30 to 11.30 without any breaks. Yeah. And again, majority of the like productive work done, you know, straight away without any distractions. So... Yeah, I think definitely. it's something I'm going to continue even when I'm building but obviously with more calories and uh, probably an extra meal Yeah, make it four meals a day yeah, sounds um, good so, so yeah so that's where we're at currently um, what did we do last week uh, last Sunday uh, where most people had Easter Sunday to sort of chill relax my alarm was set for 4.45 so I could get on the road just after 5 um, and get to Akash for about 6 Uh, For once, I was the one that was late um, by about 15, (laughs) 20 minutes or so. Um, But we still made it uh, up to Manchester in time. So the purpose of us getting up early was we were driving. So I was driving from Crawley to pick up Akash in Northwest London. And then from Northwest London up to Manchester to teach a seminar at Frontline Fit Performance. Is that Frontline? Frontline Fit Performance, yeah. Yeah, yeah. FLF. Um, which is uh, such a well-equipped gym. You know, we've mentioned it on some of our podcasts previously um, that the trainers there are really open-minded. They all have a huge thirst for knowledge, great atmosphere, which is, I think the atmosphere is a big thing that stands out with FLF. Is it's the team banter. It's yeah, like they team. all just take the, yeah. take the piss out of each other. They get on. Yeah. It doesn't seem like there's any like animosity, which you see on some gym floors. So that's always quite refreshing. Um, we taught a... Uh, female specific 
fat loss seminar that seemed to have gone down really well. Um, we spoke about sort of PCOS, menstrual cycle dysfunction, uh, why women are set up differently in a physiological sense to, to men and how that can affect rates of fat loss. Akash touched on female program design, sort of if uh, say increasing your back width um, to accentuate the V tape was the goal or what to do if glutes and hamstrings were an emphasis. Um, even just for the, for the coaches there, how to set up, you know, the, the general population female client. He run through various uh, ways to program that, different example splits, um, which was, I think the guys uh, found it really interesting. I could see them all getting their phones out, taking photos of the slides. Yeah, something directly applicable, which is something we try and keep with, as a common theme for all our seminars. And then Adam also ran through a couple of case studies uh, where, he, you know, he showed how he got certain women from, you know, A to B and the exact steps he took along the way. Yeah. Which so is very rare for people to show so uh, transparently. Mm, yeah. The, the big thing that we try and do uh, differently with our seminars is that there's no smoke and mirrors. We don't try and baffle you with the science and leave you hanging. Uh, for example, with this seminar, uh, I broke it down into theory in the morning which I told them straight off the bat, this is gonna be dry, it's gonna be quite boring. We're gonna talk about like hormone sensitive lipase, uh, ultra low density lipoproteins, and the roles in fat loss. And the reason for it wasn't to try and baffle them or wow them, it was to give them the, the, the building why. blocks yeah. Yeah, as to, to why. So it was right, these hormones do this in the body, and then we came on to how uh, it's affected by the, the female endocrinology. Then we moved into application, which was then how do we set up a diet? What do we do if this situation arises or you have this client in front of you? And then I finished it as Akash said, I finished it with case studies. So rather than just come in, regurgitate a load of, you know, physiology textbook stuff that anybody can, can do, it was a case of, okay, here is the boring uh, stuff. Here is what you actually need to do. And here is how I have done it. And this is what we try and do with all of our seminars. Mm. And so far, um, you know, without us prompting that, that's always been the female, uh, sorry, the female, the feedback that we've got, you know, when we've delivered them, we've had trainers come to us afterwards and say, you know, I've sat on, and we're not going to name them, you know, so-and-so seminar, this person seminar, this person seminar, they're great presenters, but I kind of leave it like, ah, what can I actually apply? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, whereas so far, the feedback from all of our seminars is that straight away, you know, right off the bat, they're implementing something. Even on Instagram, you know, they're tagging us the days afterwards while they're writing their clients. Yeah, I think that's, that's one of the big takeaways we, we really push from our seminars is the direct applicability you can apply into your, into your own training and, and nutrition and with your clients and yourself straight away. I mean, in the one we did in January was a, a mix of trainers and general population. And I think the general population took a lot away, a lot away from it mm. as well, right? Yeah, we aimed it right at that, you know, in between. In between, so yeah. The intermediate advanced coaches but then also, as, as we said, like clients themselves. Um, and yeah, the feedback was yeah. pretty good. I think, uh, I think transparency is something we really try and push at RNT. And if, if you want to see, you know, more of this, you can check out our case studies in our education section where, yeah, we, hold you know, we, back. we take, we take all our clients, uh, from where we go through each, each step of the way. Um, and I think, I think that's quite unique about what we do. Yeah. yeah. So if you're interested in checking out those uh, case studies, just go to uh, rntfitness.co.uk or .com if you're listening in the US. Um, head to the education tab on the site and then go to uh, case studies. And in there, you'll see, you know, visually uh, what we've done. You'll see the, the before and after photos. And then you'll see the changes we made, the rationale behind it, how the client felt. Mm. Um, we hold nothing back. You know, there's no paywall. We don't expect you to pay five pound a month to do it. Like, again, not going to name them, but some coaches. Um, we just give it all out there. Um, and we, you know, we encourage you as well. If you have questions, you find us on social media, DM us. You know, we, we make time to answer these things. Yeah. And speaking of case studies, we've had a really productive week in terms of client photo shoots. We've had, a, we had one last Monday, a client named Rashid who was trained by Nathan and he had a great photo shoot down at Rip Gym. And then on Wednesday, we were down again for um, Rishi Katecha. He had a great shoot. It came in really lean. And then on Sunday that just went, um, we had another client called Baumik who did a shoot at Explosive Ape. So three really good shoots. And we got another one in April. And then I think Adam's got six coming yeah, up. Yeah, so I've got, uh, I've got, six coming up I've got my client, Hetan, 
doing his own shoot um, in uh, two and a half weeks. Okay. By the time this podcast airs, that will be done. So we'll have um, two more in April then? Two more in April. So you've got one, I've got one. And then I've got a group shoot with uh, six clients. So I've got four females and two males. Um, all completely mixed backgrounds. Um, one of the males, he won't mind me saying this, I've discussed this before on social media, Ryan. Um, he's uh, he, he was technically dead for three minutes, had a heart attack. Um, and has now come back and he's getting uh, he's got that bit between his teeth he's getting shredded for a photo shoot um, I've got one of my uh, female clients Natalie who I caught up with this morning uh, she was originally a size 20 she's now um, a size 8 I believe in the uh, upper body and a size 10 in the low 8 to 10 in the lower body um, previously when she was on holiday she would be there in 30 degree heat wearing a cardigan. Um, and I spoke to her today about what she's going to wear at the shoot. And she's going to get herself some shorts for the first time. She's going to rock those as well as a sports bra, uh, which I just think is amazing. Like, you know, of course, as a trainer, it's, it's cool, isn't it? When you look back and you see the, yeah, the yeah. visual. But when you change somebody's psychology, um, super rewarding. And then there's uh, Hope that uh, came to me a lot, pretty much a year ago. Yeah, uh, we've been working together for a year now. Uh, vegetarian, um, had tried many different diets, could never get lean. And this was like her last ditch attempt. Uh, she saw what I did with um, Emily Deluzzi, so decided to get in touch. Her lower body has always been a big problem. She always jokes about her knees um, and says that she had uh, sausage legs back in the day. Well, she's now in shorts uh, when the weather's good. Again, she wants to do a, a photo shoot wearing them. Um, so it's, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a really cool... It's a good mix of people. Right? Yeah. It just goes to show that, you know, we're not after, you know, only the competitors or only the people that are live, live in the gym. It's people, anyone who's got serious goals, we're willing to work with, right? Yeah. As long as, it doesn't matter what background you come with, as long as you're willing to put the work in and, you know, take your goals seriously and you want to get to that next level... They're the type of people we love working with and, you know, changing their lives. Yeah, because just, you, just driven people. Um, the, the, yeah, the examples in this photo shoot, uh, as I've just said, are completely broad. And one of them actually is a competitor, Lauren, um, who is, uh, she is two weeks out from a show. She's then going to do the photo shoot in six weeks and then she competes another seven days after that. So it's a complete board spectrum. Where are you doing, where are you doing the shoot? Uh, the shoot, I believe, is going to be at Ripped. Yeah, Ripped. Um, yeah, Ripped's a great place. I think it's going to be at Ripped. Um, just waiting for Ben to confirm it, but I'm, I'm pretty sure we agreed on Ripped, Jim. So, so yes, yeah, so we've got complete mixed bag. We've got vegetarian. We've got a competitor. Is vegetarian? Um, Hope. Okay, yeah, Bo makes a vegetarian as well. Yeah, so, so it's, it's a complete mix, um, which is cool. Right, moving on to some stuff uh, that's actually going to help you guys now. So we just wanted to give you a bit of background into where we've been at and where we're going. Um, but now on to some stuff that help you. So a couple of topics from the weekend that stuck out teaching at the seminar. One was uh, diet breaks. Now, one of the things I said during the seminar was that there are two things that I think most uh, coaches are missing out on when it comes to female transformations. The first is that I don't see your him being HCL being used with many clients. Now, we all know that uh, typically most women will store body fat in their lower body and that's actually healthy from a cardiovascular standpoint but most women also want that fat gone um, or sped up should I say you know easier to mobilize um, so the first thing where I think trainers go wrong is they don't use the himbean HCL which is an uh, to, to bore you it's an alpha 2 antagonist that helps inhibit these stubborn fat body cells I'll put out a video um, over the next couple of weeks you will be able to watch with the, that in a bit more depth we'll also link in the show notes uh, an article Adam's done on uh, the fat loss supplement stack that yeah involves exactly him. it gives a bit so you can the, read more with the background behind it um, but the second big thing and the bit that we're going to talk about now is the use of diet breaks so I see it time and time again where a coach uh, is working with a client for months and months and months. And after that initial honeymoon fat loss, uh, three months later, they stay the same. And it's almost like uh, just a renter friend, you know? Um, the client looks the same. They just kind of shoot the shit in the gym. Nothing really changes. And what I put that down to is the client kind of burning out mentally. And uh, how do I say that? Like cheating on the diet, 
but I don't mean cheating as in binging and consciously going out and screwing up on purpose. What I mean is like misreporting food, your know, small snack bits they cook for their kids and the little bit goes in that they wouldn't have usually done or um, you know they back off on their cardio they're not they're kind of going through the motions rather than following a set heart rate. And this is all stuff you know mostly on a, a subconscious level they don't realize they're doing. Um, it's just kind of where that f- that fire's gone out a little bit. Um, so rather than coaches banging their head against a brick wall and just keep telling their clients to do the same thing week on week, sometimes you have to be proactive and actually encourage your client to back off. You want to try and aim to do this before they reach the point of burning out. So you actually want to be met with a little bit of resistance from the client where you suggest the diet break and they're kind of like, oh, but I've you know, still got more to go. I don't feel like I, do, I need one yet. And you need to explain the rationale as to why you're going to do it and you need to force them to implement it. What this then does, uh, do you want to... So what signs are you looking for in the client? Well, this is hard, right? Because it's done mainly by uh, intuition yeah. now, especially now that, um, that it's mainly online-based. I, like, I can't give like... Uh, it's tough to basically... Why don't you give a scenario of the last person When I've been working, I've been working with a client, even online, I get to know like their email language, the tone of their emails, as funny as that sounds. It was easier to read when I was working with clients in person. I could physically see, you know, the uh, motivation wane from them or, you know, I could tell when they're having a good day or a bad day. Through email, it is a little bit harder, but it's why I try and advise my clients not to just send me a simple, hi, Adam, please find the form attached. Like, give me some information on how the week's gone. Mm. I can then sense your tone through email. And if at week 11... I sense that, you know, it's it's not quite where it was, you know, you're not sounding as enthusiastic. I can then just make a little mental note of that, see if it's just chalked down to just a bad week, or see if you do the same the following week. If you do, then I'm anticipating that you are starting to subconsciously lose motivation, right? My job as your coach is to to work out roughly when this is going to happen. And as I said, I don't have a set formula. It's very tough online. It's it's intuition. Sometimes I get it right. Sometimes I get it wrong. Um, And then I'm going to impress upon you that you should back off, which sounds counterintuitive to your goals. But one of two things, the body weight usually drops, which is interesting, right? We put calories up, we pull back on cardio and body weight tends to drop between like one and four pounds in the first seven days. And it's not that you're putting in some crap food that's revving up the metabolism that we used to get told it's not that at all two things happen one is either you're super stressed that the fact that you're not making the progress that you want so cortisol is raised which binds to the same uh, receptor as aldosterone which gives you like a a, a false uh, you're retaining water basically um so when you relax suddenly you're told don't focus so much on the body weight relax a little bit on the diet don't go all out with the exercise you know just back off slightly cortisol just tends to just bottom out it just drops and suddenly with it water retention just just dissipates so that's one mechanism the other is that you kind of want to prove me wrong and you want to get back on track and grinding again because i've made you do this hopefully before you've reached the point of burning out so now you're suddenly super adherent to everything. So for example, say I had a female on 1600 calories, but she's starting to wane towards the end. Your know, output is dropping a little bit. She's not going as intense when she does her cardio. As I mentioned, maybe she's having just the odd little snack or maybe a soft drink once or twice per week. These small things, like they, they add up. Um, so that's 1600 calories that I'm recommending, and this is just a, it's just a random figure, um, that could turn into more like 1,900 calories, 2,100 calories over the weeks. Whereas instead, if I tell her I want her on 1,800 calories, it's a 200 calorie increase, but she's now actually nailing that 200 calories uh, increase. Sorry, so she's, she's following that 1,800 calories. So my point is that 1,800 calories tracked is going to beat a suggested 1,600 calories that actually ends up at more like over 2,000 calories. Um, so they're the two mechanisms in which it works. What about a general neat? Could that be a could that be a general neat as well? You're putting more food in the body. Um, you know the mental well-being is lifted. So neat non-exercise uh, activity thermogenesis, so subconscious movement, uh, that also tends to increase as well. Um, 
So we know that, uh, I can't remember the exact, I, I did present on it. I think it's within, what else, was it within five days, the female body, um, I think it reduces leptin, I want to say by like 40%. I mean, I had all the figures in front of me. Is Anyway, the female body uh, responds very rapidly to changes in energy uh, demands. This is due to the menstrual cycle. It wants to do all it can to protect it. Um, so within five days, the female body will have some form of uh, adaptation, which then subconsciously reduces NEAT. So as I mentioned, the subconscious movement, fidgeting, you know, taking the stairs over the lift, all this sort of thing um, on a subconscious level. By increasing food, increasing well-being, suddenly NEAT uh, goes back up, leptin levels start to come uh, back in line with what we want. So, so there's some positive uh, adaptations to that. Um, where was I going with this? Uh, I did have a point I was trying to make before we mentioned NEAT. Um, I'm completely thrown now. So anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. The long and the short of it is, yeah, sorry, this was, this was it. That I actually had one of my female clients where she was resistant to doing it. And then I, I you know, enforced it upon her. I told her, I really think it's going to be beneficial. Trust me on this. Body fat is going to come flying off when we hit uh, the accelerator pedal again. And she actually messaged me midweek saying, I feel like a caged animal. And this is a, you know, not a very aggressive female. Like she's very, you know, her emails are worded very softly. So for her to use that terminology just tells me that she's, she's ready to go again. yeah, that fire has been lit. Like she's ready to rock. Um, and, and it happened. You know, she ramped things up and straight away she was like a pound and a half down that, that following week. Yeah, the training intensity goes through the roof. Of that training point. intensity goes up. Neat yeah. goes up. Adherence goes up to the diet. They want to prove you wrong. They want to go back into a dieting phase. They're trying to tell you, I don't need this. You're enforcing it upon them. They know it's working, but they are ready to work hard again to prove you wrong and drive back into yeah. the deficit. So, so that's me wrapping up on diet breaks. So this is for those of you that are plugging away at fat loss. Um, you know, you're a couple months in, I'd say roughly anywhere between like two and four months for most people, probably about eight to 16 week mark. Um, you know, just motivation is going a little bit. You start questioning the whys. You go through the motions when you do your morning walks or your cardio or whatever. Training intensity, you know, you haven't logged properly or you haven't made progressions consistently over the last couple of weeks. Sometimes just being counterintuitive, taking, uh, you know, one step back allows you to then take two forwards. So with that, let's uh, segue into kind of the opposite. Mini cuts. Yeah. So a diet break is used during the fat loss period and it's consciously um, putting calories up. The opposing uh, mechanism is a, a mini diet or a mini cut as we call it. And this is for the guys or girls that are trying to pack on size. Mm. Um, and then they, again, they fall into the same habit of just banging their head against a brick wall. So let's switch over to you, Akash. Well, I guess to the point where, you know, you start, you, you keep eating in a surplus, you, you know, you're sneaking in more and more crappy foods and it gets to the point where your body's not really using it, making use, making efficient use of uh, the fuel that you're giving it. And you start accumulating a lot more body fat. Your training intensity starts to wane. Your joints start, your joints start hurting and digestion goes to crap. Um, and you know, your body fat is a bit too, it's, it's too high and doesn't warrant being high enough, high, that high, um, despite being in a muscle building phase. So there comes a point where, you know, you need to take a step back in order to take two steps forward. Okay. I'll just make sure that was up. So like, like for myself now, I'm in a mini cut myself and I hit um, a body weight PB of 90.4 kilos. But given the video shoot we've got coming up and the fact that, you know, my face was getting a bit more puffier than, than it should be. Understatement. <laughs> It was probably time for a, for a mini cut. And I mean, the signs that I use for myself are, you know, if, if my serratus starts to disappear or, you know, my, you know, my lower abs start getting a bit Fuck too... Fuck me, they went years ago. <laughs> lower abs start they're, to... They're, start, they're start to permanent poop, hibernation. Start to pouch over my belt. <laughs> That's what I mean. I shouldn't call it lower abs. I should call it belly button. The, the pouch. <laughs> the pouch. Um, or if, if usually for me, it's more if my arms get less vascular because my arms are usually quite vascular throughout the year. Um, so if they, if they lose vascularity, that's usually a sign for me that I've gone too far. Uh, and for me, mine is always digestion. Yeah. Well, that's what we've noticed. Akash, yeah. his digestion is pretty good year round. Um, so for him, he goes by visual cues of body fat. For me, it's always that I know it's time to back off when I wake up feeling like I've just eaten. 
So my alarm goes off in the morning. I roll out of bed and I feel bloated and I don't want my first meal. Yeah, so I don't get that. So it's really important for me to take pictures throughout the year. Yeah. Because I have fallen into the trap so many times where I'll just, you know, I'll think, oh, okay, it's, it's muscle building. So I don't need to take pictures often. And then, you know, have, it's gone three, four months have gone. I take pictures and, you know, you can hardly recognize yourself, right? <laughs> I've done that so many times. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, so with a mini cut, what you want to do is you want to kind of get in, in and out quickly. Uh, so I'd advise anywhere between two and six weeks, depending on how far you've gone. And you want to be pretty aggressive with this. So if you've gone up to, say, three and a half, three and a half thousand calories in your muscle building phase, maybe four thousand, you can probably cut this straight down to two, two to two and a half thousand, right? Yeah. Um, jack cardio up um, you with lists, a bit of hit. And really, you want to get in and out. So you can get back to, you know, building muscle and... Um, you know, back to what the original goal is. And during this phase, during this phase, you shouldn't really be losing any strength. That should all be fine. Strength should stay um, up. Yeah. You the, should feel a lot more energetic. Your sleep should improve. You can, you can improve. go hard. Yeah. Like with a, if you're, if you're doing like, you know, a 12 to 16 week photo shoot prep or competition prep or whatever, um, the goal is to do it quite gradually, right? To minimize muscle yeah. loss throughout the process. With a mini cut, as Akash said, the goal is in and out fast. And because you're coming off the back of such high calories, um, probably excess body fat accrual, yeah, you've got energy, energy stores, uh, you know, they're there to be used. So you're not going to be tapping into muscle tissue. Yeah, you've got plenty of energy stores. I mean, in the last few weeks, I've hit three PBs across my main indicator lifts, which you think, okay, that, that's not going to happen because I'm doing more cardio, I'm doing HIIT training, my fats are only 30, 40 grams, my carbs are lower than normal. But because of the, the high energy stores and also because there's a motivation to, you know, really go hard and maintain that muscle mass that you built, um, your training intensity should stay high and strength, sh strength should remain or even increase. Yeah. Um, as, your joints in as your joints get better, you get better pumps and inflammation is lower. Generally, you should feel a lot better, right? Mm, yeah. So the take home there is you can go hard on these. You can slash the calories quite drastically. Um, yeah. without detriment and then after the mini cut you want to you don't want to ramp straight back up to where you were but you can be aggressive with your jumps and and then you know run another three four three four five months of uh, muscle building before running another mini cut it, you know you really got to play it individually and by but you know by your visuals and and uh, your body's feedback perfect so let's um let's finish off with a couple of client and listener questions or i say listener um more like instagram follower questions so, uh, Kai and Saga, which are two clients of Saga, yours. yeah. Saga, yeah. Sorry for butchering that, if you're listening to this. Um, they have asked, should you track your vegetables? Now, now, let me give you some context on this. So, they've been following the RNT Nutrition Tracker, and we typically advise not to uh, track veggies on there and just keep it consistent. But now they're moving over to MyFitnessPal, and they've put, they've inputted everything into the everything they're eating into the tracker, and they've noticed vegetables have you know they have carbs and calories. So I said to them, Adam will do Adam will do a segment on this, and here he goes. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, so there's it's a big bone of contention. So a lot of like the um, the evidence based uh, trainers out there will say that your coach is an idiot if he tells you not to track vegetables. Well, call me an idiot then, um, because I don't track vegetables with a lot of my clients. Now, that's not me saying that vegetables contain zero calories. Don't mistake it for that. Or, you know, people have even gone so far as to suggesting that some vegetables are negative calories. So um, we have different types of fiber, soluble and insoluble. And for the most part, this is generalizing. But for the most part, we know that, um, you know, each gram of protein has four calories, each gram of carbs has four, each gram of fats has nine. Well, fiber is digested slightly differently in that it ferments in the gut and it's converted into short chain fatty acids. And it has a calorie worth of, I think it's around, it, it depends on the type of fiber, but it's around one and a half to three calories. So this is where it kind of got its like insignificance. You know, people said, it, you know, it doesn't contain calories, have as much as you want, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, and that's not true. It does contain calories, minimal calories comparative to other macronutrients, but it does contain them. Where I come from with green veg, my standpoint is that when I start with a client from day one, I want to make the process as simple as possible. So I will just suggest that they add veggies to all of their solid meals. 
So if they're doing whole food meal, liquid meal, whole food meal, liquid meal, whole food meal, for example, they would have veggies at three of their meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, alongside their chicken, alongside their steak, salmon, their eggs in the morning, they could have spinach, and you get the, you get the picture. My big thing is that consistency is the king. So if you start the process not tracking calories, uh, sorry, vegetables, then don't start tracking them through it. If you start the process or you start with a coach or your own dieting phase and you've been calculating the calories into your macros, carry on doing that. You want consistency. So that's number one. Number two is that the portion size wants to stay consistent too. So for me, I don't weigh my veggies. I go by just one hat. I don't eat a lot of veggies. This is well known. I don't eat a lot. I don't need them. You know, when I add a lot of insoluble fiber, which is found in greens, um, I get really bad gastric upset and it actually has the opposite effect and it slows things down for me. So a moderate amount when I diet does the job. I don't need crazy amounts. So for me, it's very simple. It's one large handful of greens whether that's broccoli, cauliflower, tender stem broccoli, asparagus, green beans, one handful. And the key is that that one handful remains the same throughout prep. That is the key. So where the calories, where they do contain calories, the only time problems really are going to arise is if, say, you start the diet on let's use an example in terms of weight rather than handfuls say you started the diet on 50 grams of vegetables in three of your meals per day eight weeks down the line calories have gradually reduced carbohydrates have reduced as you've got hungrier you've now tripled these green veggies to 150 grams well then you are increasing you know your caloric intake from them and you're starting to offset this is this is more applicable to um, more the lighter clients. So predominantly the females and also the guys that just don't weigh a lot where you know the margins of error are a lot less. If you suddenly start tripling, quadrupling your green veg intake, you will be adding small amounts of calories in, which will start to offset the deficit. So if each time your coach makes a reduction in carbohydrate, you're doubling your greens intake, you are going to be offsetting it for some degree. But the take home, I'll let you get to your point in a second. The take home really is if currently you've started a fat loss phase and you do already count vegetables and you use my fitness pal and you are tracking them, carry on. There's nothing wrong with it. You've already accounted for them. Don't suddenly stop counting them. If on the flip side, you start a fat loss phase and you don't count green veggies, then just keep doing that. Just don't count them. Keep it consistent all the way through. Um, and if you're somebody new, you haven't started dieting yet, you're about to, and you're wondering which option you should go, the reality is either will work. Consistency is key. My preference, just to keep things simple, is to just pick uh, an amount of green veggies from day one, typically a large handful, with at least three of your meals, and maintain that throughout the diet. The only caveat, and I don't know why I'm throwing this in there, which is going to confuse you, the only caveat is if you do end up on a very extreme diet, such as like a protein sparing modified fast or something, um, in that case, there could be a case made for increasing yeah. your green veggies uh, to help with satiety because general calories are so, so, so low. But to keep it simple, I personally don't. I've never done it. I've always just kept it consistent. And more importantly, I've never really told my clients to either because it just makes it so complicated. There's already so many things they've got to worry about. Adding another, you know, another decision, another... Thing to, another thing to worry about it just makes the process a lot harder yeah so I'd keep it really really simple just keep it consistent on a daily basis exactly yeah um, okay on to uh, somebody one of my Instagram followers uh, Mook Hardy um, not sure of the first name there he's asked how do we program rack pulls do we put it in with the upper day or the lower day now I'm going to put Akash on the spot with this one seeing as he did that with the veggies so how do you program them He's straight away to the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it really depends. I mean, it depends on the split. So if you're doing an upper lower split, I'd probably put it on a lower day just because there's a lot of demand on the, on the glutes, hamstrings and lower back. So I think if you put it on the upper day, you're going you're gonna to have carryover you know, more, more carryover and re residual fatigue 
that, is, that, is, that kind of s- sneaks into your lower body days. If you're doing something like push pull legs, then you could probably put the right pull on the on the pull day. But if it's an upper lower split, I'd probably put it on the lower body day, just to minimize lower back fatigue throughout the week. Which I think is a hugely underrated factor in programming, mm. where people end up sometimes they end up programming a lower back lower back intensive exercise nearly every day. Yeah, barbell rows, exactly. Romanian deadlift, squat. Yeah, so, so if you're doing a rat deadlift in your routine on a lower body day, you want to make sure the day before you're not doing something like a banner row on the, on your upper day. You want to make sure that that day you're doing something a little bit less low back intensive, like a cable row or a chest supported row. And then the next day when you're doing legs, uh, you can start it with a rat pull and that would work quite well. The one caveat with the rat pull is to make sure it's below your knee. Yeah. Yeah. None of these half reps. You don't want to be doing things over your knee because then you just, it's just the ego lift, right? Yeah. Just, just go do a body weight back extension. um okay uh last question is uh james matthews how much of a deficit do we start people on 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, and so on the answer to that is that uh, akash and i and uh, the coaches at rnt we don't uh, really calculate uh deficits based on percentages as such we tend to go uh, calories per pound of body weight and really it comes down to time frames Hmm. so as an example, um, when Akash started his prep, his competition prep, he was dieting for 21 weeks. So he would have started the deficit, you know, very gradual and throughout the prep would have made small bumps uh, in, 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 in calorie, deficit, yeah. Yeah, in, in terms of the deficit to keep him going. So it would have probably started at about a 10% deficit and then maybe gone 10, 15% and probably remained through there because it was over a long time period. I've mentioned at the beginning of this podcast that I'm doing a short, sharp, intense six week diet. So I've actually gone from uh, around four and a half thousand calories per day on average, straight down to 2000 calories. So I have half of them. Would I take this approach if I was doing a 16 to 20 week prep? God no. But for a four to six week diet, you can get away with working much harder. So the very simple answer to that is if I've got a lifestyle client, somebody that comes to me that's dieted in the past, they make it very clear. They're not after a a short, sharp uh, transformation. They want to make this sustainable, long-term ingrained habits and so on. Then I'm going to start on the smallest deficit possible to elicit fat loss while keeping them motivated. If I get a client come to me and they want a drastic visual transformation within a reasonable time frame, let's say eight to 12 weeks, eight to 16 weeks perhaps, then I'll give them a moderate deficit. If I get somebody that comes to me and they're intermediate advanced, I know that they can push themselves and they have a holiday or a photo shoot or something within like the next three to five weeks, then the deficit is gonna be you know, mm. a, a pretty big one and they're gonna have to take themselves to some dark places yeah grind you know calories will be minimal and push for it these are as i said in the intermediate intermediate advanced trainees um that have a short time frame so there's no we can't really say across the board right we give everybody a 10 percent deficit it doesn't work like that um the severity of the deficit of calories uh, we don't base it on percentages but it completely depends on On time frame and probably body fat and time frame body fat and client mentality where they're at you know, had they just come off the back of another coach having run them into the ground? If yes, am I going to do the same thing? No. Fuck no. Um, we're going to take a more moderate approach. On the other hand, I've had one of my female clients that's come to me from another coach and she kept saying to him, Look, I'm not seeing results. I'm not seeing results. And he kept saying, be patient, be patient. She worked with him for six months. She got nowhere. So in that case, I am taking a more aggressive approach because I need to be doing the polar opposite of whatever the guy that she's just left is doing right um so yeah it's it's really a case of it depends and that comes down to where it's part of you know why we set rnt up is we're not a copy and paste uh, pt company or online coaching company should i say you know everything is based on the client's uh, initial application form the consult that we do with them their starting photos each plan is written from the ground up rather than just rolled out on mass um and unfortunately not enough online coaches are doing this, which is part of the reason that we set RNT up. Yeah, it's personalized, no cookie cutter plans, no generic BS. It's, it's all personalized towards the client, their lifestyle, their goals and their needs. Yeah, and, and the ongoing check-ins, you know, it's not simple 
one sentence answers four days later that say carry on <laughs> i mean that'll also de- that'll also help determine the de- deficit as well because we'll use the check-ins to determine whether the deficit is right or not right? yeah yeah. can they go harder so, you, know, you know do we need to back off a little bit do we need to hold them steady yeah you might think it's a good deficit but their body's not responding to it so it may need to be harder or or the opposite mm, yeah so it's, it's all individual yes completely individual um, that was a weird way of saying that uh, I'm, I'm now getting tired and hungry I'm looking at the clock well, I think Adam, Adam's meal. cooking today right oh yeah I need to get up yeah. what have we got we got uh, oh chicken and rice <laughs> <laughs> what did I have about two and a half hours ago chicken and rice brilliant um, anyway I hope you guys found this one informative uh, no guests this week you've just had Akash and I kind of almost freestyle this we decided to do this 15 minutes before recording um hopefully the audio is okay this is the first time we've sat sort of together with a microphone in between us so please feed back to us on you know whether it's loud enough not loud enough whether the sound quality was okay um if you if you like what we do i'm going to give you the same plug that i give every week uh please hit subscribe please leave us a review please always if you have suggestions on topics you want us to cover or questions you know that say we've mentioned something in here that you either don't agree with or you want a little bit more information on just direct message one of us we're always open to that um follow us on instagram which is at rnt underscore fitness at akash Vigella, and myself at adam haley one um, and also check out the website we referenced earlier obviously the uh, education area but you can also check out our client transformations you can grab yourself a free 25 day um diet plan pdf i say diet plan it's actually it's well-rounded it's, uh, training diet it's, cardio supplementation yeah if you've got 25 days to lose some uh, some fat uh and would, email support There's yeah email yeah you get free well. email support as well um it's completely free no catch just head to the home page on the website hit free diet plan um, and you've got a, a PDF that we put together. And the website is www.rntfitness.com. Or .co.uk. Um, yeah. Uh, I like the sound of the .com more. I guess we sound global. <laughs> sounds right? more Global, official, global right? domination. It sounds more official. Yeah, I'm just so used to saying .co.uk, .co.uk because we didn't have the .com because it was a Japanese porn for- site. If you, if you forward slash uh, educational transformations from the .com, it all goes to it, right? Yeah, it still goes to... Yeah. It, goes it reverts to back to .co.uk. .co.uk, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, anyway we're waffling at this stage um yes hope you found it helpful any questions just message us hit subscribe leave a review and uh to everyone that listened to takes the, you know i'm gonna go on off on another tangent here i said i'd stop waffling but actually i'm i'm on a roll and uh, i need to eat in a second um just a thanks really for the support we've got like i was training one of my clients this morning and he said that what a difference these podcasts make when he does his morning walks and you know he referenced certain podcasts that he's listened to over the last couple of weeks i get messages from you guys um you know saying you found certain elements a bit funny or helpful so for those of you that do tune in each week and you look forward to getting uh you know this wednesday download come through uh just a thanks from the both of us really and kind of yeah thank you yeah we just we'd set this thing up just to kind of air our thoughts and see where it went and so far it's we've had a really good response so yeah a big thanks for the both of us and and from the other coaches at rnt too yeah yeah right over and out <laughs> <laughs>